My name is Marcello. Welcome to the Source AV Design Group's YouTube channel. We have a spectacular audio system from Audio Research to present today. The Reference 160M Mark II Mono Amplifiers, Reference 6SE Line Stage Preamplifier, and the Reference Phono 3SE Phono Stage. This video will primarily discuss my impressions of the component's build quality, design, and sound quality. We have much to cover, so let's get right into it. Audio Research, one of the oldest American audio manufacturers, has been manufacturing spectacular audio products in the United States since 1970. From their 48,000 square foot technically advanced production plant in Maple Grove, Minnesota, the Audio Research team guides each product from concept and design through assembly and finishing. Audio Research takes great pride in manufacturing audio products that will last many generations, and their knowledgeable technicians can repair and restore the majority of products made throughout their rich product line history. After two years in development, the new Reference 160M monoblock power amplifier is designed and built like no other power amplifier I have had the pleasure of demoing at home. The new Mark II version has a refined audio topology with fewer and higher quality components in the signal path than previous designs. The switchable ultralinear triode operation gives a listener two distinct qualities of sound to choose from that allow you to tailor the sound and power output based on the speakers used, system matching, and the types of music you are listening to. Ultra linear mode provides approximately 140 watts per channel, which is indicated by a green color LED, and triode mode is about 70 watts per channel and characterized by a blue-white LED above the function button. Depending on speaker efficiency, many users will likely enjoy the ultra linear mode for harder hitting, dynamic, more modern produced music genres. In contrast, the triode mode is absolutely lovely for vocal-based acoustic compositions that don't require the same level of speed and impact. The 160M uses two match pairs of KT150 power tubes and two 6H30 tubes for the gain stage to deliver 140 watts of continuous power from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, with total harmonic distortion according to audio research typically 1% 1 at 140 watts and below 0.04% at 1 watt. The mono amplifiers have proprietary auto bias that will work with various tubes other than the KT150, such as the 6550. KT88 and KT120. The power amplifier also has output tube monitoring, an advanced power meter, and aesthetic styling that matches the style of the Reference 6SE line stage and Reference Phono 3SE phono stage to complete the system's look. The visual design of the 160M Mark II is one of, if not my favorite power amplifiers in existence today. A tube cage with a built-in fan protects the tubes as well as helps keep the tubes cool during operation. Or for an even better view of the tubes, you can remove the tube cage, giving you better visual access to the tubes that sit behind Audio Research's legendary ghost meters, giving a listener a real-time power output readings via the illuminated hidden LEDs, which are adjustable based on user preference. Audio Research chose solid-state power regulation to increase efficiency, stability, and reliability for the 160M Mark II. According to Audio Research, the power supply stage uses newly developed high energy capacity transformers and bulk storage capacity network to deliver extremely high current on demand, which allow these amplifiers to sound fast, dynamic, authoritative, and highly accurate. Some of these terms are generally used for pure solid state amplifiers. However, the 160M Mark II is in a league of its own and has none of the issues that plague other two power amplifier designs, producing deep textured bass that is powerful yet well controlled and superb dynamics and transients that are as fast as many flagship solid state amplifiers from other manufacturers. I would go as far as to say that the Ref 160M Mark II, when paired with the Ref 6SE preamplifier, has all the benefits of listening to a solid state system with even better three dimensionality, depth, and a sound stage presentation that is simply the best I have heard in my home. Part of the secret sauce of this epic soundstage presentation is the inaudible, extremely low noise floor, which is aided by a special four layer circuit board. This circuit board design was previously reserved for Audio Research's preamplifiers. On the front of the Ref 160M, you will see the power button, meter light, tube monitor, and ultra linear triode button. Behind the ghost meters, the KT150 tubes, smaller 6H30 tubes, and output transformers look magnificent. On the back of the 160M, you will see the power cord inlet, a switch to defeat the auto shutoff feature, a switch for fan speed, a switch for choosing between balanced and single ended, a tube hours meter with reset button, followed by a three pin balance XLR input, a single ended RCA input, RS232, remote turn on, in and out, and lastly, heavy duty speaker output terminals for four, eight or 16 ohm speakers. 
The REF 160M Mark II is 17.25 inches wide, 10 inches high, and 18.5 inches deep, not including the handles, and weighs 56 pounds. The power amplifiers get very warm during operation, so good air circulation and placement will be essential when building your system. Looking next at the reference 6SE line stage preamplifier, the 6SE features a single gain stage that is a fully balanced Class A design with zero feedback. Using six 6H30 tubes for the gain stage, a 6H30 for the highly regulated power supply, and a 6550 tube for vacuum tube regulation, the 6SE replaces the reference 6 offering, which according to audio research is their highest performing preamp ever available in a single chassis preamplifier. The 6SE has less than 0.01% distortion with a gain output of 12 dB for the balanced output and 6 dB for the single ended output. The 6SE is silent from a noise floor perspective and is highly transparent, allowing you to hear the sound signature of the source components you connect with the 6SE. On the front of the 6SE, we can see the input selector, on off, menu, enter, mono and stereo, invert phase and mute buttons, which all sit below the vacuum fluorescent display, followed lastly by the volume control. The 6SE display allows you to view tube hour life, adjust the left and right, auto shutdown, processor modes, adjust display brightness, reset the volume, input naming, and more. On the back of the 6SE, you see four sets of balanced XLR inputs, followed by four sets of single-ended inputs. Next, you have a set of balanced XLR and single-ended fixed-level line record outputs for use with a recorder and two sets of balanced XLR and single-ended outputs. Next, you have an RS-232 connector, your control connections, and the AC mains connector. The 6SE weighs 37.5 pounds and has a width of 19 inches, height of 7.8 inches, and depth of 16.5 inches, not including the handles, which add an extra 1.6 inches on the front panel. Again, air circulation is essential and you cannot stack any components on top of the 6SE, so consider this when planning out your listening room as some racks may not accommodate the width of the 6SE or have enough clearance to provide optimal airflow. Last, let's look at the reference Phono 3SE Phono Stage before getting into my sound impressions of the system. The 3SE has the exact dimensions as the 6SE with the same visual design and chassis. The weight is also close, with the 3SE weighing about a pound less or 36.5 pounds. The 3SE Phono Preamplifier, which can accommodate most any moving coil or moving magnet cartridge, is the latest generation and continues the upgrades introduced in the reference 6SE, including six 6H30 vacuum tubes, three per channel, while one 6H30 and 6550WE provide regulation in the power supply. Looking at the front of the 3SE, you will see a power, menu, option, enter, input, and mute button underneath the display. The display through the settings allows you to adjust gain, inputs, and load from 50, 100, 200, 500, 1000, or 47K. You can also change the auto shutdown, the cartridge settings for both inputs, monitor tube hours, adjust display brightness, and choose the equalization curves from RIAA, DECA, and Columbia for different pressings. On the back of the 3SE, you will see the two sets of single-ended phono inputs, turntable ground, followed by the right and left XLR and single-ended main outputs. You also have an RS-232 connector and IR input, followed by the AC mains connector. The 3SE and 6SE include heavy-duty, well-built remotes that are some of the most substantial feeling remotes I have ever used. Now that we have discussed most specifications and a bit about the design, let's talk about how the system sounds. For my sound impressions, I utilize my Marantz TT15S1 turntable with a clear audio virtuoso cartridge for vinyl playback. I use my Korg Electronics Hugo TT2 with a to-go module for digital high-res streaming with Tidal and Cobuzz via Rune. For speaker pairings, I listen with my personal pair of Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 5 towers and the Amati G5 Maserati Fulgore Special Edition speakers seen in our last video on the channel. If you haven't seen that video, you should consider checking it out after this video. I used a few options for speaker cables and interconnects at different price points I have in-house before landing on the best flagship Crimson cables and speaker wires from Claris. Both Audio Research and Sonus Faber recommend using the highest quality cables and interconnects to maintain what is possible regarding the best sound quality. Using the Crimson cables in the system brought a higher level of clarity and realism to the system's sound that was audibly noticeable and once heard could not be unheard. Claris makes incredible cables. Thanks to Joe from Claris for loaning the speaker wires and interconnects, allowing me to listen to what is truly possible when price is no object. 
I would describe the sound of this audio research system as balanced from the very lowest bass to the highest treble frequencies. The system is effortless in presentation, reproducing all the information on recordings. Both macro and micro detail presentation are only limited by the quality of your source components, speakers, and cables. When paired with my turntable and especially my Hugo TT2 DAC, the Sonus Faber speakers driven by the reference audio research system present a body of sound so natural and lifelike for instruments and vocals. The sense of realism of Lindsey Stirling's violin and speed of attack as she plays it on Underground from her Artemis album is the best I have heard from any amplifier preamplifier combo. When the bass line drops in around 130, the depth, control, authority, and speed in the bass of the 160M Mark II amplifiers are vastly superior to any other amplification system I have heard at home. Not just that, it's also the texture and tone of the bass, and when listening to Yo-Yo Ma's Six Evolutions Bach Cello Suites album, the audio research system can provide a pristine representation of Yo-Yo Ma on the vast, deep, three-dimensional soundstage, allowing me to hear the finest details of his fingers traveling across the fingerboard and strings, and even more, the most lifelike picture in my mind's eye of the texture of his bow and the bow hair as he plays. There is no additional editorialization on the part of the amplifiers or preamplifiers in my listening. Hence, accuracy and reality are the names of the game, while still providing finesse in the delivery of the color of male and female vocals and classical and modern instruments as the original artist intended, creating the most defined, dynamic, and lifelike sound as if the artist is in the room with you. Other audio research systems do this to an extent, as I have described with my personal i50 integrated tube amplifier, however on a much smaller scale and without the same level of transparency or authority, especially in the bass regions. The cocktail party effect of this audio research system is magnificent, which is the ability of the audio system to localize voices on busy recordings as if one was at a busy party and you, the listener, are narrowing in on the vocals of the person speaking to you with ultimate clarity from their voice, not allowing other voices and noises to bleed into theirs. A fun track to listen to, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, is from Daft Punk's Random Access Memories Track 3 by Giorgio. This entire album from Daft Punk is a fabulous album that shows all the class leading sound qualities of the system with both electronic music production and traditional music instruments and vocals mixed to perfection. The mid-range presentation of the system is intoxicating with vocals appearing large and prominent on the soundstage with shape and definition that you can reach out and touch. The experience is so holographic and dimensional that some of you who grew up in the 60s and 70s music scene may get startled and think you are having a flashback. That is a bit of humor, but at the same time, there is truth to what I'm saying, and those of you who get it will understand what I'm saying. This audio research system can produce vivid visualizations in music on a higher level of perception not easily obtained from lesser systems. As I said in our most recent video presentation of the Amati G5 speakers, which I use this audio research system for my impressions and describe the midrange as delicious. Like a gourmet chef can present a dish with extravagant visual appeal and mouth-watering flavor, so do the Sonus Faber speakers and the audio research reference system. Instruments and vocals sound free of any harsh presentation in the upper midrange. The clarity and detail in the midrange I expect from an audio system of this caliber are there, but presented in a way that never comes across as too forward. John Mayer's vocals and guitar on Daughters sound as if he is in the room playing a live show for me. I cannot stress enough the level of realism and beauty the midrange presents with this audio research system and Sonus Faber speakers, with an openness to the sound, defining instruments and vocals while still allowing their souls to shine through the music. Listening to the track Deportation from the Babel soundtrack is breathtaking. The speed, clarity, definition and texture of the strings of Gustavo, the composer and primary artist on this recording, are like nothing I have ever heard. The treble presentation of the audio research system is magnificent. Listeners who listen to warmer or more rolled off sounding amplifiers in the treble region will be shocked about how much air, sparkle, and presence they were missing after listening to this setup. From a system synergy perspective, I would say, for my preferences, I would still pair this system with a speaker that will complement the treble presentation, avoiding bright speaker pairings. The Sonus Faber speakers in this video are a match made in heaven for my personal preferences. Cymbals, wind, and brass instruments are tonally accurate with exceptional timbre when listening to this system. The synthesizer takes on a whole new life for electronic music lovers compared to less capable systems. 
Paired with a superb mid-range and deep, powerful bass, the amplifiers can produce, simply put, the most balanced and optimized sound for my preferences for all genres of music when paired with synergistic source components and speakers. I've already talked about it several times, but I will reiterate. The sound stage of these amplifiers is again the best I have ever heard at home. Pinpoint sniper-like imaging, three-dimensionality, depth to the soundstage, and in-room presence that is class-leading and one of the hallmarks of the high-definition sound audio research is so famous for. Do yourself a favor. If you value superior soundstage presentation, get out to your local dealer and listen to audio research components. So whether it was spinning my favorite vinyl or streaming music in high resolution, I am honored and grateful to have had the opportunity to experience and live with one of the greatest sonic audio systems I have ever heard. While I love my i50 from Audio Research, which represents one of the best values in sound and quality in their lineup, it will be tough to go back after hearing what is possible with this reference system. So yes, Audio Research, you have ruined me in the best of ways forever. For that, you have my thanks and gratitude for allowing me to hear in my home the beauty, passion, engineering, and technology you and the entire team at Audio Research are capable of. Bravo. If you would like to read more about this system and have additional questions about purchasing or having a sound demo at our showroom, please visit the links in the video description. If you are going to be in the Southern California region, we would love to see you stop by our 10,000 square foot showroom, hang out with us, and listen to the entire line of audio research components paired with the finest speakers from Sonus Faber on display in North America. If you are interested in trading up your old headphones, amplifiers, or other gently used audio gear for a new set of speakers or a new amplifier, check out the links in the video description to our trade-up program, and don't forget we will price match other authorized dealers. We have some cool videos coming this year with new product announcements, so please consider subscribing to our channel today. From $150 earphones to multi-million dollar home audio, cinema, and automation systems, TSAV is a hi-fi enthusiast paradise for building the system of your dreams. So let's start the conversations in the video comments on what you think of this incredible audio system and what components you have heard from audio research. While you're there, smash that like button for us. Until next time, friends, remember, let the music be your guide.